Welcome to the One a Day Painting Challenge. I'm Yvette, and in today's video, we're gonna paint this awesome painting. I'm gonna paint it live and show you step-by-step step everything I do and talk about all the tips and tricks of how I paint this painting. So I encourage you to paint along with me. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way, it'll make it easier for you to find the videos in the future. The first thing that I'm gonna do is add my background. Now I'm going to add green to the walls. The reason why I'm doing this is because this picture is a portrait of my mom and her favorite color is green. In the original image that I'm using as a reference, uh, the wall is an off-white and uh, around the mirror is off-white and uh, I don't know, I just wanted to give it a little pop of color. She's really into color. So we're going to go ahead and just Kind of, I'm not going to really fuss with the lines too much because I do want an impressionistic look. The last video I did, I was so focused on the background that it took forever to paint until I got to the person, which was really the main focus of the whole piece. So I'm going to try to avoid that this time and more focus on the person than I am the background. This is going to be a really fun piece. It seems like it's really difficult, but trust me, after I show you all these little things that I'm going to do, you're going to see how easy it is to do a reflection in the mirror. Um, it's going to be fun. I think that this, this painting would be a good painting for somebody who has painted a little bit before. I think if you are a super beginner and you haven't painted in years, this one might be a tiny bit challenging. But go ahead, you know, even if it is a little challenging, go ahead and practice. Do something, you know. If you don't practice, you're never going to get somewhere. So sometimes you just have to be brave, suck it up, and then just do it. Which is kind of pretty much how I learned, just sucking it up and doing it. Okay, so also I'm going to get the little edges. Now it's okay if you go into your pencil marks. So what I did was I pre-sketched this out. I started the photo a little bit and I lightly let, went over and just basically color blocked it out. So like I put a basic, a really super basic road map as to where things are gonna go. Um, I didn't fuss a whole lot with it, just enough to help me a little bit. Make sure I get in there. Now you can make your wall whatever color you want. Uh, most walls usually aren't green, but it's her favorite color. Um, when it comes to doing a portrait, my style is that I'm more of a, you know what, I'm going to go over here and just do little markings just to make the paint look interesting so when it dries you got all kinds of little moments going on. There we go. And also remember to paint your edges. If you're using this style of canvas, I recommend doing that now. Um, so my style of painting is that I don't want to make it look like a photograph. I want to actually make it look like a painting. Uh, it's my, my, my handwriting. Um, the more you, you play with a painting and add layers and work on it, the more realistic it's going to look. So this painting could theoretically take you 10 hours. It could take you an hour. It could take you 15 minutes. It's all in your hand and how you want to do it and how cool you want your painting. Now sometimes people can paint really fast and make awesome paintings, but if you notice, those people that can do something amazing in like 15 minutes, they've done it a billion times. They've practiced and practiced and practiced and they're really good. Um, yeah, I do feel that, you know, some of it is that you are born with it and you just see it because you pay attention, but honestly, I didn't know how to paint that well when I was in high school. So I'm really, I worked on it and worked on it, and I'm kind of currently to this phase of my art journey. So I'm still, after all these years, still practicing. That's one of the reasons I invented this whole painting challenge once a day deal. Um, I've seen other artists do it, but they only do it for like a month. My goal is to do it for a year because that's 365 paintings. And I also... And blessed in that I have that opportunity to have that time in my day when I can do these paintings. Um, I did have to uh, schedule such things and make it work out for myself to actually have it. And I have an at-home office. And in my office, I have everything set up already. 
So that way all I literally do is sit down, fill my water bowl, and then just sit down and paint. And also at the end of each painting, I spend about five minutes and put my station back to uh, square one so the next day I can just sit down. And by constantly keeping up with it and keeping everything situated, it helps it so that I'm doing more art and less clerical stuff, um, which is good. Also, I have a window right in front of me, I, and I have a window off to the side in my room. It's a bedroom that I converted into an office. So the lighting is kind of an issue for an art studio. I recommend natural, normal light. Sometimes I've painted when it's been kind of dark and I'm using just my lamp, because I also have a lamp on this too as well. Um, so I have tons of tons of light, and then my walls on my in my art studio are blue. A really light baby blue. So there's lots of light bouncing around. I have painted in the past where I wasn't paying attention. It was night and it was dark. And then I see my painting the next morning. And it's like, what? I mean, it's cool. But I was like, what was I thinking? Like, I'm not like my colors are just whacked. And it, it's harder. I find that for me to do uh, skin, if I don't have good lighting, I don't do that good of blending. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, wash my brush with my water. I'm gonna go ahead and dry my brush and put it aside. I do recommend, um, if you're not gonna use a brush and you're done with it at the end of the painting, cleaning it so that way it's just good and it's better and it's not sitting in water all day, ruining the bristles. Okay, so from right now, I recommend drying the background so we don't smear green everywhere. should be good okay so now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna work on the background in the mirror I'm gonna go ahead and use this one just because why not sure um, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of blue now notice when I'm painting that as I use a color I pour it out I don't use all the color I don't I prefer not to put out the colors until I need them because it keeps them uh, moist longer. And yeah, I don't want to have it like dry out and everything. And notice how I didn't kill my palette. I just used the edge of the pa of my palette. Okay, so with this, I'm going to start this way and go around. Nice pretty points. It's okay if you go over the marks um, that you've made with your pencil. And these are pencil marks. I recommend doing it in pencil versus pen so that way it's easier to erase and you don't mess up your canvas a whole lot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let it be marky. I'm not going to like really go over this and I'm going to just allow these little marks that happen naturally with the brush to occur. That's also something that's like kind of a little bit my handwriting, my style. Um, I don't really want to fight fuss with the background too much. I want to let it be. So this parts of the painting are the parts where you should relax and be comfortable and happy and be in good spirits. Um, I do feel that the clothing is way harder than skin and doing faces because there's so many more shadows and curves to the fabric. So just relax. Be happy when you paint. I have noticed within with my own paintings that if I'm stressing out and freaking out, my paintings start looking like stick figures and like not so pretty and cool and unique. And when I just let it happen and let the paint do its thing, it starts kind of creating its own life. 
and then it just it looks cool and then I can take credit that I'm a really cool artist and yeah so chill out um, okay, so this is cool. I like the little marks that are happening. Um, I also feel too that when I'm using acrylic paint, and so I'm feel I feel as though when you put layer on top of layer, that's when things come alive. So it's not gonna right away. It's not gonna look like something special. It'll just you know like I colored it and I blocked it in with color. Then what I'm going to do is go in and add accents and highlights and low lights, just like we would if we were putting on makeup. Same kind of basic theories and ideas apply when painting a face. Um, I think some people say faces are really hard, um, but I think the reason why is because there are more uh, crevices in the face than there are in like an arm or a leg. So there's more shadows and bouncing and lights bouncing off more in different areas. But honestly, it's only hard if you're telling yourself it's hard. So don't tell yourself it's hard. Be like, okay, I got this. And like, also keep in mind too, while you're painting, if you want to photograph, use a camera, use your phone. If you want a painting, then make it a painting. M make it look like a painting. And so that's cool. If it gets a little cartoony, whatever. That's the whole deal. You'll get better. And sometimes cartoony is pretty, actually pretty cool. I'm using little swooshes. Painting is just a series of swooshes. It really is. There's fabric right there. Like, so her face would go down here, but there's a bit of fabric that's on the inside. They almost look like a little fishes, like if I was doing modern, or um, if I was doing actually um, Australian Indian art, this is a way in which the um, the the Aborigines, this is a this is a technique that they use to paint fishes in their style. It's pretty cool, very folk arty. I remember studying it a long, long time ago. Okay. Um, so that's about cool. That's good. It works. Love it. I ain't going to mess with it. I'm going to let it dry. And we're going to see that the little marks happen. Um, now, in the original photo, there was another wall. Um, and you could see stuff on it. I, I'm kind of just, we don't care about that. We care about my mommy. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I washed my brush. I cleaned it. Um... I think it would be a good time to dry it just so that way we don't have accidental uh-ohs and boo-boos by uh, smearing the paint. going into fantasy world and painting the wall green um, we can use our color wheel so I have green it's more of a brighter green so I'd be like me all right well look if I look I got red and purple on the other side I also have orange dark purple now her hat in the original photo is um, a really dull black kind of like a dark gray um, but we also, the thing is, if we just paint this black, what's going to happen is it's going to be flat toned. But if we had some other colors like blues and purples in there and stuff, we'll have more of a 3D effect because there are some ripples in the hat and there's a little flower. And I, I would really love to show that. So 
let's see, I've got green, we're also using blue. Another way we can do the, since uh, the wheel, is we got our green here. I'm just gonna go here, okay, so green. We already have blue, so that means we can go like a reddish orange, which is most likely gonna be her lipstick then. Um, I could put her scarf, I could make her scarf a little bit reddish orange. I mean, let's see. So we were more like Mia, right? We're gonna be a light blue, because I'm gonna add light blue onto this, and then we're gonna be light green. So we want more red than we want orange to do that. Yep, so I set that aside. And let's see, I'm gonna take this one, and let's go ahead and, I'm gonna do the hat last, because the hat is covering her skin. Um, and so is here, and so is here. So let's start with the face. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take uh, a little, one of my little brushes, this one, and I'm going to use my palette. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I think I'm going to rotate it actually quite a bit, a quarter, so that way I can leave some space for the blue to be able to add some white later. So when I'm mixing, it's easier to mix on the palette and save space. I'm going to add some of my light flesh tone. And then I'm going to add some dark flesh tone. And then I'm going to go and add a tiny bit of white. Now if you noticed, I'm only adding a tiny, tiny bit. The reason why is because we're going to be mixing. And while we mix, it's going to make more paint, right? So then we'll have a ton of it. So just add little bits at a time. There really is no exact, I mean, I guess there is an exact measurement, but I'm not going to be here weighing stuff and figuring it all out. I'm just going to squirt it onto my palette. Um, so however much you think you need. Okay, which actually this is more than plenty, Very, way more than plenty. I'm going to go ahead and put a base tone down. Uh, my mom, it, she she's kind of a darker girl. She's olive skin. She does wear quite a bit of makeup. But, I don't know, I think it's just her demographic of how she is. It's not that she's ugly, she's just, when she wears her face makeup, she does it a little bit darker. And then also, our, and then also one thing to keep in consideration when you are painting a figure is that some parts of the body see more sun than other parts of the body. And so, like, my faces would typically normally want to be a tiny bit darker than we would, like, for example, the top of our hands want to be darker than the bottom of our hands. Our bottom of the hands tend to be a little bit lighter. You don't notice it. It's very minimal, minimal, minimal. So for the base tone, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my light brown. Now we're gonna see we're gonna make lighter browns than this. I don't want to go totally dark because that's gonna be my shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cover the face just to have like a base. Now in the photo she's got some hair that's kind of over the ear. So that kind of helps. If you have a hard time painting ears, I would suggest doing a hint of an ear, but then lightly painting some hair over it, which then kind of blurs it a little bit in a way, and the eye will fill in everything, and it'll be more realistic that it's uh, it'll be more realistic that it's an ear. Now notice I'm keeping a little bit right here for the the inside of the scarf. She's wearing a really detailed uh, scarf in the photo, um, but I think I might just, I'm really more focused on her face than anything. I want to put most of my time in that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make her scarf probably, I don't know, whatever color. Now her, uh, her mouth obviously is not this shape, okay? It's not. Her mouth is not like this, but she has... In this, she's really dressed up and dolled out on this one. Like, she's getting ready to go out in an evening in the middle of a blizzard. So she's really dolled up pretty with makeup and just ready to go. So she's got some really dark lipstick going on. It's a definitely an evening look that she was going for in the middle of winter. Which is kind of cool. Nobody ever really thinks about painting people in winter. When you see people, you always see them in, like, dresses and stuff. <laughs> Like, it's all summery. So winter's definitely a challenge. I guess I know more fabric, really. So this is a good type of painting idea to get in your portfolio when you're uh, to do a winter uh, person in winter, but yet still 
make it easy on yourself that you're not like doing so much fabric. Okay, so that's the gist, the basic idea. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do the same here. Um, so my parent, my mom is currently living in Paris right now. And I think that this photo was taken in Paris. And I think it wasn't taken like she was going to go on a night on the town with my dad. So I think that's what it was. I think, I don't know, but I'm assuming this might be from a hotel because I don't re recognize this, this, uh, thing in their apart, this mirror in their apartment. So they might've been on like a vacation in the middle of winter. I think they were somewhere near Normandy, somewhere south of there, small little tiny town. Um, now when, try to be careful when we're going over the green here to really make sure that you're not like keep your curves. People are really curvy people. Even if they're flat and no boobs or butt or anything, there's still a curve there. So try to maintain curves. And doing the curves in the right way is going to make it appear better. You're just all around, it's just going to work out. So now that I have my paste stone town, just to make me feel better, I'm going to go ahead and dry. looks really nice. I'm going to go back and clean my brush really good, wipe it out into a nice little pretty point. I don't want to really add water to my paint because I'm using kind of a better good better quality of paint, so I really don't need to and I just poured it out so it's still moist. I don't really need to add any gesso or anything to it. It's still my paint is workable to where I like it. Um okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do lighter colors. As you notice, I didn't paint the eyes, the mouth, or the nose through, even though the, yeah, okay, there's skin on the nose. It's to help me so that I can see the dimensions. If I would have just painted it out right now with my base tones, it would have been harder for me to see my lines and where everything goes. Um, so my mom has a wider nose. Um, we have Spanish uh, ancestry and uh, ancestry from the Netherlands. Um, I think it's it's good to take into note your ancestry. I don't think we have African American on our side. So this is like a dark mixture. I can also make a lighter mixture. The more I add white to this, the lighter it's going to be. The more I add brown, the darker it's going to get. This is kind of a halfway point. I like it. It works. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in a little bit here on the nose because it is really dark. Okay, so where else are we going to want to do this? We're going to want to do this, let's say, we'll do a little bit in the ear. Just a little bit. We're going to do some down here for shadow. We're also going to add highlights. I kind of add the highlights more towards the end, and then I just kind of work it. So I also want to add in between here, between the chin and the lip, I want to add a little bit of a dark area. So I'm adding the darker colors where it's, where the, the indentations are. So like wherever you have like a crevice on the face is where I add the darker stuff. The lighter stuff, cause she's wearing blush here, which you could add a little bit of pink to your tones. I'm going to go all fleshy right now. Um, if you're new to painting, I recommend go all fleshy. Uh, and then when you get better, then start adding extra tones, like building up your portfolio. I'm going to start easy and then I'll work it and get harder and harder as we do more series. 
on purpose. Um, I took a poll on my Facebook page and I asked everybody uh, what they felt that their level was at. And I got a lot of responses of beginner. So I'm going to focus on making easier paintings right now. Um, hope you guys will follow along and we'll get better together. I mean, I still feel that over time I'm getting better as well. Okay, so right now I kind of want to check my photo. I'm working off of this guy. I took this picture. Well, I mean, she took the picture and sent it to me. I put it in the printer. This helps me with gray tones to have highlights and low lights. So I'm seeing what is the darker areas? Where is it really dark? Where is it lighter? So it's not that I'm seeing color so much as it's helping me see the gray scale and the scale of how much hue, hue meaning how much the pigment is, like is there a lot of it, and to see the little cre crevices. So, so far, oh, she's got a little bit down here where it kind of comes down dark. You also have to think of shadows too. So not only am I thinking um, skin, uh, there's highlights and there's a little shadow, I guess. Um, not only am I thinking skin, I'm also thinking uh, she's got a hat on. So that's going to cast a shadow onto the face. Um, I noticed down here, oh, oh, you know what? It's a little dark. Yep. We could see a little bit of neck. I wasn't paying attention. There's some neck in there. Okay, so we're going to make it a little bit dark down here. A little bit. Oh, we got a definite nose. So we're going to have to keep that in mind that there's a nose. So we're going to have to put... The nose is more of a shadow. We're going to have the nose there. And then we have the mouth. So we're going to need to make sure that there's like a line between because it's not a true profile. It's like a half profile. So I want to go ahead and it's good to always knock out and do the stuff that is farther away and then work with the stuff that is closer to you. So that way there's a shadow. I kind of made it big. That's okay. I mean, I'm going to overlap it with some more paint. But I try to... I don't want the nose to stick out a little. Just a little bit. Mm. <clears throat> Sometimes when it comes to painting, you have to think of people as ugly. So that way you get the things. We all want to have little noses and like pretty puckered huge lips. And that's like the whole Kardashian thing right now. And uh, like that's cool. But at the same time, it's kind of, you know... People are people. We want to be realistic here. So I'm going to do just a light brushing. Light little dry brush. Okay, that's good. That works. Going to wash my brush. Um, put this aside. I'm going to leave this actually right here. Maybe this will help. Yeah, that'll help me a lot. Okay. So now I'm going to wash my brush, dry it. gonna go and make a lighter color I have that color if I want to I could just add more white to it I don't have to save the color if I don't want to but if I do want to come back to that color it's good to make plenty so that way you can just come back with it um, I'm a firm believer of mix as you go solely based on the fact that acrylics only have a shelf life of so long when they're out of the bottle well even when they're in the bottle Make sure when you're at the store that you buy your paint, open up the bottle and make sure it's fresh and it's not all dry and uh, and uh, like a thick slime. You want it to be a wet type of slime. That's a lot lighter, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and the cheek was really light over here. There's a little shining, it is a little shiny bit of the cheek. Make sure I still keep the nose leaved a little undented. Okay, I made the cheek a little bit thicker than I should, but it's okay. I'll just paint over it and make that area skinnier. Um, let's see. There's also a little bit of a highlight down here. Just a little one. Pretty good. The chin. The light's bouncing off. Wash my brush. Wipe it, make it a nice point, get the water off. Then I'm going to come back here on the edge and try to see if I can blend it. 
so that that other color I had underneath it, they'll blend together. That looks nice. Okay. Uh, hmm. We can still make this tone lighter, but I kind of want it to dry a little bit so I have that crisp edge. Um, let's put a little bit more. Put some more here. And there we go. And you're always changing your mind, too. When it comes to painting, oop, we forgot to make a really sharp edge here because we want to show that the she's smiling in the photo. So we have this is this part of the mouth would be this part right here where the smile line is. So there's kind of a fat fold going on. We got to keep those things in mind. We want to see the beauty within the ugliness of humanity. Like, we don't want to be drawing some little Barbie figure here because, no, we want this to be looking real. And nobody looks like Barbie does. Okay, so I'm going to put some highlights. I always, I'm a firm believer of putting the highlights over the eyes, which usually when we do do our makeup for a woman, they, you know, you do put the highlights. I just kind of block it out. Like, I don't go into a whole lot of detail. I myself personally don't use like really a whole lot of makeup at all um, just because I'm lazy is really what that comes down to. My laziness is a lot of lazy. I'm going to highlight the bridge of the nose because the light's going to kind of shine on it. I'm going to highlight a little bit here, but then I'm going to go and darken it a little bit later. Just a little bit. Let's see, where else are there going to be some highlights? Uh... Remember every so often to work fast enough to you so you're blending. The hot the cheekbone is also going to be a lighter color. Cheekbones light. Uh, we also want the no the, her her chin doesn't stick out a whole lot, but it still is kind of there. So I want to show presence of the chin. Uh, let's see. Oh, the cheek over here has a little bit going on. But I don't want it to blend in with the nose so it can stand out. I also have some of the jawbone has a highlight on it. Just a little bit. And which also has a highlight. The ridge of the ear has a highlight. You know what? The, your, her, hat's, her ear's kind of going into the hat a little bit. So we're only seeing the bottom half of the hat. My mom kind of has a little bit larger earlobes. But not so much. Yeah, so I'm just going to make a line because it's only, we're going to do half an ear here. And then this, and then these two highlights don't touch. So hopefully I did that fast enough. I want to wash out my brush and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to try to blend in some areas. Blendy, blendy, blend. Oh, I didn't paint fast enough. It dried. Ah, it dried. Okay, that's fine. We'll mix more color. We'll do more. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make some, you know what, let's go really dark now. Just cuts. Why not? Let's go really dark. So she has, we did, she does have a neck there. So we're going to do the jaw here. Going to work the jaw. She goes all the way and gets pointy. She's kind of a pointy chin. My mom is um is kind of she's she's uh I think in the BMI scale she's pretty light. I mean she lives in France and they eat fish. Put some little dark circles here. It's okay to have a little dark circles. It's human. We're all human. Be human. Also, she has a really big smile line right here. Now, okay, I know. I know I'm doing the hideous and the ugly and nobody wants to have these things, but let's be human. The smile line kind of turns around a little bit. There. I want to be a human. Okay, so, oh, and we wanted some dark shadowy area for the nose so we can really see it. And then that kind of goes down into the smile line a little bit. 
and then we want the curve of the nose and also kind of the inside of the nose a little bit down here where we always get a lot of blackheads. Yeah, I do. But yep, there we go. Shading, shading. It's looking good. Okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to put a little bit of the dark tone down. A little bit of dark tones underneath because the light, there's a light on the ceiling probably. So the under areas are going to be a little bit darker. And then what I'm going to do is slowly work because this paint is still a little bit light. I'm going to lightly blend back in. Blendy, blendy, blend. The more you blend, the cooler this is going to look. Uh, I could go a tiny bit dark on the nose. Just a little bit. Just kind of give it a distinction. I could go maybe a little, oh, the lips. We're going to use really dark here, and we're going to make a lip. Right there. Yep. Okay. I'm going to wash my brush. It's cool. I like it. It's working. Okay, so we have the really highlighted, highlighted area. And then we kind of need a between. Let's try to get an in-between color. So I'm going to go ahead with my original base tone. I'm going to get that. I'm going to try to see if I can blend and fade everything in together. It's still not going to be as wow. I'm going to blendy blend. Like right here, the cheek. I put the base tone, wipe some. I'm going to so you can see wipe there if that helps. Okay. So wash the brush wipe it out, get a nice little point, go back into my highlight color, put that back in there, and then see if I could just blend on the canvas. Maybe add a little bit of this and just see if I got a color in between. Oh, do you see how they're blending and they're fading in together? Like when we do makeup, we want to make sure that we're blending with a sponge or the brush. Do you see how it's slowly coming together? It's going to be very slow, okay? When it comes time to painting people, um, I I like to grant myself a little bit longer than I would just if I was painting some sort of abstracty little thing. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's try to do the magic we did here. Let's see if we can do it down here. Um, I'm going to give my neck just, it's still dark, so I'm just going to make the neck um, the original flesh tone. And let that be there so it's just there then we kind of went and went darker and where else could we use flesh tone let's use some flesh tone here we'll use it all there wash my brush really quick wipe it off get all the water off go into my highlight color that oops starting to get hard on me I have some water that is like on the edge of my brush here. So I'm gonna take that off so it doesn't drip onto my canvas. Okay, so now I got this little highlight thing going on. And I'm just blendy, blendy, blend. Blend, blend, blend. You just gotta work quickly. Yep, there we go. There it's coming. Wipe my brush. I'm gonna go back into my dark tone and just kind of blend on the canvas. I keep getting water on the edge of my, on, on my brush. Okay, there we go. Blend, so that's kind of it for now, for there. I'm gonna keep coming back. I'm gonna re-keep visiting ideas. My paint is drying very quick. This is acrylic. Now, if you go into oils, yeah, you're going to have better success. It's going to be easier. The, the water lasts longer. You can cheat more with it, kind of. But is, is it really cheating? Not really. My dark color. Then I'm going to go back in with my lighter color. I need to make some more of my lighter color, which might change my shade anyways. Hmm, that's a nice color. Kind of like this color. This is a new one. Let's see where we can incorporate this one. 
Incorporated Mew. Oh, it's the same. Same as my other stuff. Now, if you feel like you're looking like a monster over here, that's okay. It's okay. When you get the eyes and the mouth and everything, it'll all be good. But you know what? While we're here, let's do some, let's get some teeth going. She's all teethy in this one. So we'll just put some white in there. We'll let it dry. And then we'll come back. If you do it in a way where you get little divots in your paint, little lines, that's even better. Because then that shows like individual teeth grooves. Okay, so we'll do the whites of the eye. I'm just going to fill in the entirety of the eye. Make sure you get an oval that you're happy with. I'm going to do this one too. Usually eyes that are further away are tend to be a little bit smaller than those that are close to us. So this one will be a little bit bigger than that one just because her head is tilted a little bit. That's great. Okay, so that works. Going to let that dry. Okay, let's do, we're still working on the chin. So I want to make this really light. Okay, let's, I need a highlighty color. We're going to highlight, mix in a lot of light, highlight. I want it to be lighter than the original that I had. There. Oh, no, nope, it's the same. Let's do some wider, lighter over here. So as you see, as I'm mixing dark, dark, really dark, kind of dark, very light. See how I'm doing it like in layers and in steps. Roll the paintbrush, those nice pretty point, put some in, paint on the end, check it out. It's still the same. Ooh, I could still add some here to really make that cheek stand out. Bring it down. Make the smile line kind of prominent plus the chin. Let it fade out by dry, dry brushing. See how it's fading out? It's working. Also have kind of a highlight down here-ish, sort of, on this area. I'm going to need, this is a big line. I'm going to need to fade that when I get around to it. Take my highlight. See if I can almost, I mean, I almost want this skin tone to be almost straight white with just a hint. Okay, there we go. Lighter. Get the nose, get the roundness of the nose, the chin, the forehead kind of has a highlight. That's our T zone. We kind of want to think about that. Um, one of the things that'll help you learn how to paint people is learning makeup, like stage makeup. How would an artist do stage makeup on a, somebody in a play? That should really, that would, I think taking a class of that would really help you out. I mean, it helped me out. coming I'm gonna do her lips last and I think I'm gonna do the centers of her eyeballs last too okay so that's coming let's go a little bit darker now let's make some I'm gonna use the last of this and mix it in to have a darker shade so I don't have any of my original flesh tone, but I still see how I have super light, dark, dark, darkest. That's what I'm going for. And notice how I'm not killing my palette. 
So let's see where we are with this. This could be on the nose, like in this fleshy tone. So the eye. I'm going to go ahead and darken some of this cheek. Go ahead and darken some of the laugh lines to soften them. So they're going to be there, but I'm dry brushing over them so that they're there. And the dark circle, I should have done one there. But just, you know, they're there. We can see them, but we're blending them in. It's just got a little darkness under here. A little bit here. Dry brushing over some of the really light areas that I did just to make it more fleshy, but I'm dry brushing, so we're still gonna see the undertone of the highlight. Blending the cheek, the ear, so we still have that flesh tone. It's good, it's coming together. I got Okay, let's work on this guy a little bit to try to um, to get it more rounded so we can get a rounder shape. And go with the fleshy dark tone. See if I can blend that all in. And then I'm going to dry brush over some of the dark area. Dry brushing, just a little bit of paint is added on top. So we still see the undertone of what's going on, but it's, uh, we see the undertone, but yet it's just enough to let us have more color. There we go, it's a little bit of a blend there. I can blend more and I will. For right now, I'm going to take a quick moment and dry what I got because I like it. Okay, so I'm going to revisit the hat, but I'm going to take a break to do something else. So that way when I come back to it, I have fresh eyes looking at it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a tiny bit of uh, black to my palette. And I'm going to use my round brush. And I'm going to add just a little bit of black into my blue just a little bit to darken my blue. I think I'm going to use all my blue. There we go. I'm liking that. That works. So that's a one color I got. And let's see. So we're going to do this. And let's go ahead and fill in this hat and this one. Oh, that's nice. Mm. 
nice crisp edge when it comes to the brim of the hat. Nice crisp edge. Now I'm gonna allow, allow lines to naturally occur because there are in this, this is like a 1920s style hat. So there are lines. This is a great color to make jeans. I'm gonna make sure that my, my lines are kind of together in coherentness. If you have to, it's okay. Go ahead and turn your brush. I'm going to do this upside down. Gonna do the edges right here because I don't I, I feel like I'm overworking these lines and I don't want to overwork them. I just want them to appear naturally and to just happen. There we go. Really want to get rid of that line I created. There, break it up. Okay, I'm just going to go and make a little line here and then, then I'll go and break up that line. There we go. I love it. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and paint my edge. So I'm going to start here and work my way down. Trying to mimic the lines that are on the top so that they look like they're one cohesive unit. And then they kind of rotate back a little bit. So I was doing this angle, now I'm going to be kind of doing this angle right here. Now I don't have to be perfect, just enough. Nobody's looking at the side of the paint. Okay, oops. I kind of want to blend that in so it cohesiveness. You can go back over the edge to blend in if there's some areas that you think you could work on. Okay, there we go. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now what's going to happen is this dark blue is really going to stand out a lot, but don't worry, we'll fix it. So I'm going to maybe add a little bit more black just to, just a hint, you know, just enough to tease the eye, but not a lot. We'll say that this isn't a good quality mirror, and so the reflection isn't that much. So, there's the scarf. We're going to go a little dark there. We're going over her ear. Now this is going to be hair. There's a little hair po poking out in this hat. But we were able to see the underside of the hat. Okay, so we're going to go around to this side. And the hat comes down and around. It's a 1920s vibe. around there we go I got a little line going there I don't want that line there so what am I gonna do come back here and just kind of hide it gonna do the same thing to mimic what this is because it's the reflection I think I'm gonna go around the edge just really quick 
make sure I have those bumps in the hat because there are bumps. I'm going to do the edge, all the bumps. Okay, so now I'm going to go fresh paint on my brush and I'm going to make these lines. So we get the ripples in the fabric. Now it's not going to be exactly identical to the photograph, like where the lines are and stuff. But nobody's going to be looking at the photograph and then be like, oh, what a good, good painting. I mean, usually they're just going to see the painting on the wall and be like, oh, that's really nice. So you can make up where these folds are. Now, if you were doing like a medical journal, no, don't make that up. <laughs> but this is not medical. Nobody's studying anything. We're just going to have a nice pretty painting on our wall. Okay, so that's good. I like it. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to use my imagination. And on the inside of the scarf here, I'm going to go ahead and use some of the hat color just because. Oh, ah! wipe it before it dries if you go over an edge too quickly. That's why we dried the part underneath. If your part underneath is dry all the way, you can hurry up and wipe and get all of the fresh color you just added on, and it'll erase really quickly. Okay, there we go. Love it. It's working. Now I'm going to wash my brush, and let's go ahead and do the scarf. Uh, let's see. Oh. Let's see, in the photograph, the scarf, it was red and black and white. I don't think I want to leave it white. I don't want to make all those little lines that we got going on, because that's going to be forever. And this is more about my mommy and not about her clothes. It's kind of part of it. I mean, I do want to pay attention as to where the it's like it's folding here. There's another fold right there. I do want to pay attention to that. I did have some clothing down here that I probably should add in. Otherwise, her neck's going to look like a giraffe, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, well, let's, cons let's consult our little pyramid. So we decided we were using red for her mouth, right? We're going to use green, blue. So if I'm using red, if I'm using green, blue, Red for those lips. I could use then yellow for the scarf, and that would be very lovely, and it would be a very flowery effect. Plus, yeah, they work. Almost contrasting colors, but not quite, and we are in a darker shade of blue. So, or are we? No, not really. That's a little darker. I think we should go yellow. It'll be fun. It's pops of color. It's got the Mediterranean vibe, which I'm sure she, well, yeah, actually where this photo I was taken was, I don't know what, 500 miles from the Mediterranean. So it's kind of there, not really, but kind of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some yellow on my canvas, or on my palette. And then we're going to go ahead and get our base tone. Now, the hard part when doing fabric in a light tone is the folds you have to really you're working at it whereas when you just have a dark fabric you're just kind of figuring it out um so i'm going to go ahead and turn my canvas to make it easier for my for me and i'm going to just go ahead and color block the whole thing out as yellow um and do that edge that i needed to do just to help me so I can get a crisp edge. I like crisp edges when it comes to clothing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and crisp out that edge. Now notice the curve of the face of the scarf and then the hat comes back down. So when that happens, we're curving in two ways. We almost made an S, a very simple S. So now I'm going to go... And hopefully lines will happen. I'm going to add on my paint really thickly so I can probably, hopefully, get some lines in there. But they're going to dry flat, so we won't really see them. But, you know, if they happen, that would be very lovely. It only really happens with the darker colors. Okay. 
I don't really like the crispness of my edge. Uh, with yellow, when you go to uh, cover lead, because I did this with pencil, uh, oh, it kind of, it's harder to cover up the lead from the pencil. Go ahead and I'm just going to paint that first and then I'll go back over, make sure that I keep the roundness to my hat and I don't really cover it up. Uh, also, when you're covering, if you want to cover up a dark boo-boo, a boo-boo that you had in the dark color, you have to use a whole lot of light color to do so. So when you're doing the blue, try to be careful that you're getting your edges very crisp and clear. So that way you don't have to go and fix the boo-boo later. Now, if you have a light color and you make a boo-boo, it's way, it's super easy to go over it and cover the boo-boo. That's looking pretty cool. I'm digging it. It's working. Yes. Okay, we go back in with some yellow, and I'm going to go ahead and do these ones. Also, if you notice with this image, it's kind of off-centered a little bit. Um, that's on purpose, so that way it's more visually stimulating and appealing when we look at it. Makes our eye work a little bit. When you make the eye work a tiny bit, things look more realistic. Because nothing in nature is actually totally symmetrical. I mean, sometimes, you know, there's these nature photos of the texahedron and stuff that's really cool. But, um, yeah, it's not a very, I mean, I guess it is common. But, like, for example, a rose. A rose don't have an equal number of petals on all sides. You know, there's, there's petals that are off doing their own little thing. And so we need to think about that. Okay, so let's go back and try to align and hopefully they dry bumpy. I want to make sure that these ones on the opposite, these are really pretty lined, which I should have done the other way. There we go, fantasy world. Fantasy world, fantasy world. Okay, that works. Love it, like it. Okay, from here, I'm going to take a moment and dry it. Oh, yeah, no, that works. looking great. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Okay, so now I got my water. I'm going to bring that back, put it over here, clean up my brush. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this guy for a little bit. 
So I'm just gonna put him off to the side. Now I got my little guy. Love the little round brush. Uh, let's go ahead and work on the eyes, the hair, uh, and then probably the lips. So, okay, so her eyes, because she's uh, Mexican uh, uh, of descent, so she's is dark. She's a dark one. Go ahead. I'm going to start small, and then I'm going to work big. So I'm going to make a tiny, small eye. I'm going to put, take a moment, let it be what it is, and come back and fix it if I need to. I'm going to go here and make another little, tiny eye. Just tiny, okay? I'm gonna go back, I'll work on it, but I just gotta let it live for a minute so I'm not overworking this because black is kind of a hard color because once you, um, once you put the black, it's very hard to cover up with paint and to get those colors back because it is the darkest of the hues like I was talking about with the yellow. Let's go ahead and her ear, put some little bits in the ear into oh see where I can fix my eye now I can come back to it and fix it I'm gonna make sure it's round but with its roundness I don't want it to be round on the top or the bottom I want it to be kind of flat on the top and the bottom but rounded on the sides So the sides are round, but yet it's like an oval that was squished a little bit. Okay, these are a little bit big. It's okay. Well, we're, we're working on it, okay? I know. It's looking pretty hideous at the moment. It is. I get it. I understand. But it'll come together. Okay. Oh, boy. It don't look good at all. But it's going to happen. She's got some eyebrows. Usually eyebrows should be the last thing. But maybe this will help us give some symmetry. So we'll figure out the eyebrow is here and it goes up into the hat because the hat's kind of like covering. And then we got a little bit of an eyebrow that comes down over here. But yet the hat is still covering the eyebrow. We can do the same for this one. Just a little bit of an eyebrow. And that's it. That's all we see because the hat's covering. Looks like a little monster. A scary monster. I mean, I'm liking this one over here. Monster! Okay. It's coming. We're not done yet. It's happening, okay? Stick with me. A little scared, but it's going to happen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take some white and some of my blue. I have some blue here that don't have, doesn't have any black on it. I'm going to make a really light... Uh, I'm going to take some of my paint and make a really light blue. Mix it really good. Wipe it off of the brush a little bit. And then come back in and get some fresh blue on the tip. And then some of the dots here. I'm just going to make some random little guys. Okay, random. Random little mirror shinies. Like it's picking up on some shinies in the background. I'm going to do the edge of the hat. See how the hat's going to stand out now? Got some shinies going on. Not too many. Just enough to be like, I'm here. Break up that line that's around the hat. You know, this would be very therapeutic if you were angry with somebody. Make them look like a monster. This would be horrible if this was like, if she, I mean, she's my mommy, she's not, but like if she was a paying customer, could you imagine how much stress you would be at right now if you're looking at your person and they look like a monster? Okay. Just a little bit. There we go. I'm liking it. It works. Lightened up that mirror a little bit. Dry brushing. 
There we go. That works for me. Love it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm by no means am I anywhere done. Okay, we still have a lot going on. But I'm gonna add a little bit of red for the lipstick, but just a tiny bit onto my canvas. So here we go. We have green, red, blue, yellow, black, and all the browns. The only thing we don't got the only thing we don't got going on are the purples. Which we could add some. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the lips. Now she does in the picture, let's see if we can see. She does have a um, little bit of a bump on the top and it goes down and around. So lips are what really sell it when you're, you're painting. And then just a little bit up. It comes up and around. It's a little bit on the right side. Okay. Now we want to get those little lines in there. So she's got this little divot. Comes down. Got a little divot. My mom's really big into lipstick. And this part of the lip is going to be really skinny. It's going to be really tiny, not even there. But it's going to be straight across for the teeth. Straight across on the bottom part, and it's going to have a little curve at the top. Sometimes it's going to take you a couple of times to pass with the lipstick. Um, got to let it dry for a minute, and then we're going to re-come back and touch it up again. Because otherwise you're just pulling off paint as you go. Oh, it's working. It's coming. It's getting there. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And then I'm going to revisit the lipstick. Um, I see she has eyeshadow on. So let's go ahead and get back to our, our skin tones. And work on that a little bit. Uh, actually, you know what, while I'm here, because she does look like a little bit of a monster, let's go ahead and put some whites in the eyes. That works. That looks good. You can use some white as, a, as an actual highlight itself. I've been known to do that. A little bit of white for the actual highlight, true white. Not a lot though, just a little. You know, mostly just dry brushing is better. Um, she has her eyeshadow, so I'm going to go ahead and be true to that. So I'm going to go with my dark, actually you know what, the eyeshadow, let's go with the really dark. So the top part of the lid is going to be really light, which we've already done. And now we're going to put some eyeshadow, which is also going to help us to, to frame the eye just a little bit. And it's the same as the lips, it's skinnier on one side than it is on the other. This side it's a little bit bigger, and it's kind of like a triangle. There we go. We're going to do the same, but it's going to be very skinny. Very skinny and little on this side. She does have some little darkness going on here, just a little bit. Knowing where wrinkles are and stuff is going to help you so that way when you're painting that you can get those shadows and those crevices of the face. The more you can really 
feel the crevices, see them, know that they're there, the more it's going to start looking better. Now, let's do this. Let's connect the eye and the nose. Let's bring down her nose a little bit, shall we? I feel like the nose is a little much. I want the crevice. Kind of comes in a little bit. There we go. Starting to look like a human again. Uh, yeah. Stress and pressure, huh? Stress and pressure. So I'm taking a little bit of my brown and I'm going ahead and I'm kind of like just dry brushing everything. Just putting a little bit of flesh tone over highlights and low lights and just fleshing it out a little bit. Getting everything to blend just a little bit more. Felt like I had, I felt like my face was a little bit too not so blendy. That's working, liking that. Okay, so we'll stop that for a second and go back into the mouth. I did notice as I was doing the ear that I'm not really, let me leave this here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, Okay, I did notice that the ear, it was a little bit higher on this part, on the top part, where the canal is. It did one of these. There we go. I'm going to put some dark down here. We're going to say the inside of this scarf is, uh, is blue and the outside of the scarf is yellow. Which means we're going to have to add that light skin tone over here to kind of, or the light blue of the mirror to try to balance it out and be like, oh, okay, that's still the scarf, right? A lot of times shadows and tones, they want to touch each other 70% of the time. So my blues over here are all touching. Make sure I, I'm going to go ahead and go over the yellow a little bit and I want a sharp color. But you get what I'm saying? Like the, the, the blues kind of sort of almost all touch each other, but then they're still sporadic and there's areas where they don't touch each other. I'm going to go ahead and touch up her lipstick a little bit more. And really, you can just keep playing as long as you want. The more you go, the better. Now I see where I messed up. Now that I get closer to it, I made my bumps in not so good of a place. That's okay, I'll fix it and put some brown. See how it's adhering? The paint is adhering a little bit better. It's becoming a richer red because I allowed the other paint underneath time to dry. So adding the second coat, it's a little deeper. Oh, she's appearing to smile. I see that smile now. So it was just my mom's birthday, 
and she turned 70 and I think she looks really good for her age I really do I know I'm pretty harsh when it comes to the painting but honestly like I'm 36 and I just turned 36 and I've got wrinkles it's human part of just being a human think about that when you paint flowers and stuff think about how they're not all super symmetrical Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fix the, the mouth, the little bump I had wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it. So just in case I have a boo-boo, it's easier for me to wipe it and clean the boo-boo. Also, while I was drawing it, when you are drawing your painting, take a moment to just stare at it and think about it and look at different areas and step back for a minute and reflect. I saw also how I could fix the ear before I forget. I wanted to, I made it too skinny on the bottom area when I applied the black and it's actually kind of a little bit bigger on the bottom area. So hopefully that'll... Hopefully that helps. Okay, so now let's fix this little bump here. I took the blue. Yep. I could use this shade on the nose. If you see a shade that you like and it works out, go ahead and use it where you think you could benefit from using it, where you think you could add all the little things you could do to make it a little bit better. Okay. It's great, loving it, wonderful. Um, hmm, let's see, what do we do? Let's add some really highlights on the bridge of this nose. Just a little bit. Notice her nose goes up a little. So we're gonna make that highlight up and then we're gonna come back and put some dark areas. Oh, the nose, man, the nose. Okay, so let's go back into a darker color. I'm going to go back into my darkest. And we have nostrils. Human, we have nostrils. I have the edge, the nose is rounded, very rounded. Oh, you know where? We also have a little bit of a shadow right here. This area's got a little bit of a shadow going on. Okay, so let's try to go into a middle color and see what happens here. Oh, oh, that's the highlight color I was using. I forgot all about. There we go. That's working. I like that. And then maybe a little highlight over here. A little highlight over here. A little highlight over here. It's coming. I'm seeing it. It looks like my mommy. That's what my mommy looks like.
I kind of lost a little bit over here. I didn't like where it was originally. I kind of wanted to fix this cheek. Okay, I know that's really sharp and I need to blend that out, but it looks good. I'm liking the placement. I can kind of see, I was going to paint in some teeth, but then I thought I can sort of see, it's probably not picking it up on the camera, but I can see little lines. So I'm pretty happy. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on the other side so the other side of my cloth is dry because this is all wet. Okay. I noticed my edge here isn't really that crisp. Let's try to make it so. So I take some of my darker flesh tone. See if I can... Make my edges just a little crisper. Go over the highlight just a little bit, dry brushing to blend it. Had some blue over here that shouldn't be there. Go over it. Sometimes you gotta let this, this sit and come back for another, another little bit. Yeah, she's about, yeah. I'm liking it. See, isn't my mommy a pretty girl? Yeah, let's go with a little bit of a lighter color here to highlight the, there. Boy, I'm a, I'm kind of liking it for the moment. I mean, it's not my best work, I don't think. I don't know, it's pretty good. I'm going to give it a quick little moment here to live with it. And I'm gonna, there's a little bit of a shadow here. I was thinking there wasn't, but yeah, there kind of is. I'm gonna give it a moment and live with it. Um, this mirror is actually a pretty cool mirror and it's got a lot going on with it. So I think I'm gonna fuss, in, fuss with that for like just a minute, just to, you know, give me a break. Cause sometimes you do, you just gotta go and focus on something else and then you come back to what you're doing and then you're like, oh, that's what it needed. And then you, it's easier to fix. Like this whole shadow. I, usually there isn't a shadow here, but she's wearing a hat. So I was seeing the grayscale here. There actually really is a shadow right there. And I connected it with the nose. So that's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this uh, this funky mirror. Now it's really hard to see because of the white background, the off white. So I have the photo, the original photo over here on my phone. And I'm gonna, oh, where is it? There it is. I don't know if it'll pick up on the phone, but this is the original photo. I'm just gonna use it as kind of a reference guide idea. Okay. So I'm going to use white. When I mixed, I was kind of in a hurry when I did it. And now I've got blue in my white and that sucks and I don't like it. So now I have to deal because I was in a hurry. So now I have to deal. Ugh. And then I'm probably going to have to deal with this thing shutting off every five seconds. Now I can be true and really, you know, be like, woo, and really cool with this guy. Or I could just kind of make it happen. And I think I'm going to kind of be true at first, basic outline, and then I'm just going to make it happen. So it's just a bunch of curlies, curly cues. So because I want both sides to be even, I'm going to go them one at a time, like back and forth, back and forth. Let's got this down here. This is more like a flower that comes out, which is really cool. I'm going to go over that. I'm just going to do a rough outline right now. So we got that, and then we'll get curly Q. Lots of curl. Oh, oh, geez. I need to make that one a little bigger. Uh, let's see about this sides. I've got one of these going on. Okay, so she's covering.
that works it makes sense now it's a painting so I don't want to get in my head and be like I suck at this because no you know it's I want it I want people to know it's a painting I mean obviously it's a painting right I do, I'm an art teacher and I do paint, uh, I do paint and sit parties and stuff like that. I get a lot of people that ask me if I'll teach, um, if I'll teach how to do people. But as you can see how long this is, it's not something you can just do in a three hours. And I mean, you could, but you know, if you've got a class of 20 people, it's a little difficult. Okay, so she's covering, she's covering, so we're going to have one of these. Yep, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And she's my mommy, so if it sucks, she's going to tell me it's the coolest painting ever. Because I know that's what I do with my kid. <laughs> so, yeah. But, like, no, but really, though, I don't want to give my mom a painting that sucks. I want to give her a good one. See, that didn't match up. Oh, well. Now, I can go back in and actually, let's see if we can make it match. And just go back and touch it up. So, I don't need these for right now. I got my basic outline. I'm going to clean up my brush for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and give this a moment to dry so that way I can put a second coat on and the painting, the paint will stick. Very good. Okay, I'm going to wash out my brush. I'll wash my brush and clean it. I really should um, get clean water, especially when you're working in a white town. Um, but, yeah, I'm lazy. Okay, right here. This was like a really cool flower that kind of came out. So I want to make sure that... Oh, oh geez. A little brown in that one. And make sure that each of these little flowers has their own little bit of life. 
these little plumages things. Each one is unique, but yet still a cohesive unit. Oh, I hate that. Hate it. Hate it. Let's erase. Let's erase. It's a good thing I dried, isn't it? And there we go. That's how you erase when you hate it. Notice how I'm not adding any water. I don't want to pick up the green. Okay. That's good. So let's do it again. I'm going to have to come at this and pass it a few times. Let's let this be what it is. I'll come back and work on it. I'm going to go back and make these little edges. Make the these little curvy cues a little darker and give them some personality. If you feel that you need to rotate your painting, go ahead and do that. I think making this little border on this mirror makes the mirror extra fun. That's probably why she took the painting, saw the really cool mirror and went, oh, that's nice. Since they've been in Paris, they've been living there for, um, I think about two years now. And they've been, my mom is still working. And so she, uh, she's working there and my dad's hanging out, having a good time. And they're going and doing a lot of museums and being total tourists and everything. Um, they say they're kind of cool with it, you know, it's like they've been on vacation for two years in Paris and they're like, yeah, it's great, we saw it, next! <laughs> um, uh, but what a cool opportunity to have, to be able to just travel and get paid to travel. I mean, now she is working a lot of hours at the office, which, ugh. but, you know, it is what it is to live where they're living and they're right next to the Champs de Lys, so they're living in a really amazing awesome cool place and town in the sense that i mean it's not like in the united states their apartment's kind of sad but the area and where it's located and they got a rooftop terrace and it's you know all modernized inside but it's little um so yeah cool opportunity right okay i didn't stare at the picture a lot to really look at it but I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and probably do a line around the mirror I'm gonna think about that for a minute see if that's really what I want to do make sure oh ah! see this is why it has to dry I got paint on my hand Ooh. So make sure I don't smear paint I'm gonna go ahead and turn the canvas so that way I don't smear white paint everywhere also Sometimes it's a good idea to turn your painting upside down and look at it in that direction and see, hmm, could there be something and possibly paint upside down on the face and see if maybe you see other things you didn't see before. It's a good idea to walk away from your painting and look at it from a distance, turn it and look at it and angle the painting in different ways. So you can see different uh, things. Stuff will have start happening. And then I feel that if you could turn your painting upside down, look at it and love it and see it upside down, you're done. You're totally done. Sometimes you got to know when to stop. And that's, I, I noticed for some of my students, the beginning, it's 
they didn't know when to stop. And I had that problem too. I've totally had that problem. Uh, every once in a while, I still have that problem. Doesn't happen as often. But you know, you get, you're having a good time. You're having fun. But you know, you've already put in so much work that you don't want to mess it up. And sometimes overworking is messing it up, right? I'm going to go ahead and dry that so I don't have a boo-boo experience. I can see there's a spot right there where some of the water on my brush, it came off. It probably doesn't show it in the camera, but I can definitely see it. So if you have little water droplets on the edge of your brush, I rec on the metal part of the brush, I recommend getting them out so those water droplets don't occur. Okay, so this is great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go around the edge of my painting. And I want to take a moment and just say thank you so much for hanging out with me today and painting. I'm having a good time hanging out with you. Um, go ahead and subscribe so that way it's going to make it easier for you to find my paintings. Um, YouTube is like requiring me to have so many subscribers and watch time minutes and stuff to be able to go live. And like I really want to go live so that way uh, I, you can talk to me in real time and we can have an, a conversation together. And so I need peoples, otherwise YouTube's not going to allow me to, to go live. So uh, please subscribe. Um, also too, if you have a buddy, you know of somebody who's a painter, you know, bring them in on this challenge. I'm literally painting one painting a day, like literally I'm doing it. And uh, it's always cool to have like people, you know. And, you know, you might not like all the images I choose and all that, so you don't have to do them. Just do the ones you like, the ones you want to do. Paint. Sometimes it has happened to me where I'll paint and I'll turn the TV on in the background just so I can have, like, uh, not be by myself in my little quiet office to have a background noise. So, yeah, even if you're not painting exactly what I'm painting, go ahead and paint your own thing and just... You know, leave me on so I have a voice to talk to when we're talking about paint and ideas. And, you know, it might come apart in the video that you're like, oh, yeah, I wondered about that or something, you know. And then you can just take a moment and watch that area of the video. Because, um, like, also, I used to do it where I'd have music playing. That's great. That's wonderful. But then you really, like, it really tells you time. And you're like, oh, and... Is on three hours and all that and then you start hearing the same music day after day the same songs and so I kind of tried to get away from that just a little bit um, my goal is to spend around six hours a day in the art studio uh, because this is my job this is my profession this is how I make money pay my bills um, so I'm trying to um, work at it you know put some hours this is what I do all day and it's actually quite lucrative. You know, I really didn't think it would be, but it is. Now that I'm being, like, before I would only paint once a month or so and just kind of do my thing. But now that I'm actually built my website, did all the stuff, it's actually, yeah, 
I'm I'm making pretty good money doing this so it works out and it's like I'm not on welfare I don't have to do any of that and I'm able to pay all my bills just fine and I don't need to have any sort of assistance or have somebody going and like my husband doesn't have to go and pay all my bills so that's pretty cool right and then people you know they ask me for painting classes which is where I make most of my money but you're never gonna get to that level unless you practice and I had to do that and I still do that and that's really this whole painting challenge is almost self-serving for me it's really about me painting and bringing you guys along for the ride so yeah like I did this for me and I figured I might as well video what I'm doing and maybe if I could help somebody and help somebody um because I would just sit here quietly in my chair and, uh, yeah, and it's, it's, it's sad, you know, I really did. For the longest time, I referred to my art studio as the dungeon because I felt like it. And then um, I did have an art studio for a minute that was in a store, and I did that, and that was great and wonderful. Um, I'm currently in the process of moving my art studio into the mall, um, but that's like a whole to-do, right? I mean, that's a whole... Um, um, I'm, I'm in current negotiations about um, how much I want to pay and how much I'm willing to pay to the mall. And they're like, I have a lot of electrical issues with the space that I want. And they're trying to say that I, as a merchant, have to pay for all that when it's, I had the inspector come down for zoning and look at it and it wasn't up to code. So since it wasn't up to code, and then I had a contractor, which is uh, one of my, my husband's uncles, came over, gave me a family price, and he told me 6000 to get everything up to code. Because the last the last uh, company was there, I don't know, I guess codes changed, I don't know. And then when they left, I think they left in kind of a mean way, because it looks like they just ripped stuff off the walls. Like, it didn't look like they, they left on too good of terms with the way they left their... Uh, facility had garbage everywhere. I mean, it was so you know, and then that kind of made me feel like, hmm, this company was obviously upset for some reason. So, and until that day, I'm still here. Uh, I'm I'm looking at shopping plazas. I'm looking everywhere, but I'm not. I'm not really pushing it as hard. Because I'm getting so many people that are asking me to come to them and do parties for them. and to So it's kind of almost, is it really lucrative to have an art studio to begin with anyways? Because, you know, I'm making money. Like, I have uh, the Park and Rex has asked me to come do a summer program. Well, they don't want to bring the kids to me. They want me to go to the kids. And so I, they want me to go. They're hosting it in the elementary for the summer. They want me to bring all my stuff and what I do to the elementary. So it's a lot of that. A bachelorette party is different things. The fundraisers. And so it's like, is it really worth it to pay rent when this is happening? So I'm going to kind of try to ride it out a little bit. And if the mall gets back to me, which they're having, it's almost like they don't, they care, but they don't. And it's, they're paying the lady that works there. They're paying her like... I don't know, not so good, I heard through the grapevine, and uh, so she's, and she kind of told me that too, in a nice way, she kind of said, they're getting enough work out of me of what they're paying me to do, so for her to return my call, it takes like two weeks, because she said they're only going to pay her for what should be a three, uh, for th working three days, so she says, I work three days, <laughs> um, so yeah it takes a minute and there's so many other stores in the mall and i'm sure i'm low on her list of things so the mall's failing because they're failing that's why as a whole like even the janitor he doesn't seem to care nobody seems to i mean they care they clean it and they have a cleaning staff but it's like when i need to talk to people people are like the office is just, nobody knows what's going on, and 
It just seems like the place that everybody's upset when they're at work and everybody's tired and just doesn't want to be there. And so it's like, it's a hard company to work with. So, um, I'm just going to do, we're, I am super close to finishing this. I'm just going to do one last little check and I noticed my, I don't like one of my eyes and I'm just going to do a little, I'm going to go upside down and we'll do a check. How do we feel? Hmm. I feel like I could add some yellow into the ear over here and make it just out just a little bit. She's got a little bit of an earlobe, not much. Mm. Go into here. I've got some green and some dark areas. Let's see if I can touch that up. There we go wash my brush so far so good i'm liking what i see i think i'm going to add a little bit of highlight right here i'm going to add highlight right there i could have blended that a little better um yeah so let's turn it around add the little highlight Brighten up things, blend it in. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go with a tiny dot of white and just open up this eyeball just a tiny bit. Not much. Ever so small. Ever so tiny. That works. That's good. I like that. Feels like, I mean, on this angle, I'm liking what I see. But when I turn it around this way, I feel like I might have need to blend that in just a little bit more. Go with some flesh tone. There we go. Oops, oh, I caught into the white there. Make sure I wipe off my hand so I don't get that in there. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm liking it. I think I'm going to go ahead and haul this one. You know what? I probably could touch up the eyebrow just a smidgen. And you know what it is? I know. The edge of the hat. Let's fix the edge of the hat just a little bit. There, I love that. Yep. Go 
I'm gonna go in with some highlight on the cheek, just a little bit of highlight. Bring it down just a little bit. There we go. And yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and hold on. Let's call this one. Blend the nose a little. Wipe some off. Blendy, blend, blend. Don't want her to have too many dark circles, just a little. I notice that the nose kind of curves a little bit, comes out a little bit here, a little curviness. Okay, so that's great. I like that. Let that dry for a minute and then I'll come back and blend it. This face over here, I'm happy. It worked out. I mean, there's a little bit. I was, I've been staring at this for a minute. So I could have blended that out a little better. But other than that, I'm liking it. I like what I see. But you know what? I didn't add any red tone to this lip over here. Which really, my mom does use a lot of neutrals when, when she does her makeup. She does... Neutrals with a lot of color. There we go. And yeah, I think that's good. Um... You know what? I'm going to make her left eye a tiny bit smaller, just a little bit, not much. I notice on my paint palette, it's been about two hours now and I can feel that my paint is really getting kind of dry. I don't know if she's smiling anymore. But yeah, I think that's good. You know what? We're going to make this lip, this area of the lip, a little skinnier, and it's going to make her appear. I'm going to turn my canvas upside down for the arc of my hand, and then it's going to make it appear as though she is smiling. So we're going to go in some a little bit of a highlight, and we're going to go back into this red a little bit and make it skinnier. Yeah. Ah, they keep touching that white. And then on the last lines on this side of the wrinkle, we're going to do a highlight. Since we have a low light, we're going to do a highlight on this area. Oh, and then I wanted to blend in that nose. I was waiting for it to dry. I'm going to go back into some flesh tone.
yeah I think that's just about good I'm liking it I'm very happy with it so thank you so much for painting with me today I had a lot of fun I'm glad you joined me I hope to see you the next time um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything, please talk to me. I check my messages every day. Every time you write a message, my phone goes ding. So um, I do see them. Um, and then also, if uh, if you want to paint something special and cool that I haven't been painting, please tell me and let me know, and I will get on it. Because, like, you know, painting every day, I'm kind of running out of ideas. And, like, this happened because I was like, I need something to paint. People, give me ideas! And my mommy sent me this photo. So, um, yeah, if you... Or if you have a photo that you'd like me to use, yeah, totally. Because I am sitting in my... In my art studio. It's not like I'm out on the beach painting the beach, you know? So, uh, yeah, totally. And I like to end all my videos by saying, If you haven't today, go ahead and tell all the people... That your, your loved ones, that you love them, that you care about them. Tell them with words. Tell them with actions. Give them a hug. Spend a moment today and just be with your loved ones. Be present in the moment and just be with them. And until next time, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos.